what, what the marketing forfeit is about is strategy. Use social media and stop letting it use you. That's one thing about a business. It's an equalizer. It's a game changer. We have to think like the successful companies. Welcome to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. Not saving souls, saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. If you ever find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, you have it right here. Turn on the Marketing Pulpit Show. We're on a mission here. We're about building businesses in our community and putting people to work. That's right. Now, if you're thinking about getting into business, got a little message for you. Don't do it if you're not serious. We do not need another failed business in our community. I know you think you're doing the right thing. I understand. I admire your effort. But if you're going to do it, let's do it right. You got to market that business. You have to advertise. You have to build stakeholders. You have to provide good service. You have to satisfy a need, get rid of a want, solve some problems. So let's build businesses that are going to succeed. Now that's a tall order. You say, how, how are you supposed to know that, right? Well, one, you tune into this show. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Tell you what else, too. I'm going to tell you if your business is jacked up. That's right. The gloves are off. If you have a jacked up idea that's never going to get off the ground, Robert Gatewood is going to tell you. <laughs> All right, don't get mad at me now. I'm telling you, I'm trying to save you some heartache down the road. I'm going to tell you something else I'm saving. I'm saving the folks that you might do damage to if you get out here, start a business, and not taking it seriously, and people are transferring their accounts over to you. They're giving you their personal information their financial information, they're trusting you because you told them you were in business and they took you at your word. Don't betray that trust. So if you're going to go, go into business, let's go into it the right way. And if you're not sure, right here, Marketing Pulpit Show, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Now, I might speak in general to you and anecdotally, in many cases, but that's why we have a new section now on the show where you can call in and tell us about your business. I'll give you some advice right on the spot. Your idea is jacked up. <laughs> but look, I like you. Your heart's in the right place. But that's never going to fly. Now, why do I say this? Man, I've dealt with about every business under the sun. Damn, I, I damn near own every business under the sun. <laughs> I'm a walking poster boy of things to do and not do. I'm willing to share that information with you right here on the Marketing Pulpit Show every Friday at 10.30 a.m. You can get us by going to Facebook, live, YouTube. We're on uh, LinkedIn. We're on Twitter. So the information is about this out there. It's available. And if you get lost, you can go to marketingpulpit.com. The show is right there on the homepage, whether you have social media or not. Also, if you want to join the conversation today, go to Marketing Pulpit, and there's a link that says, be a guest on the show, and it tells you how to do that. Just click on the link, and we'll bring you on the screen, and if you want to chime in on any of the topics we're talking about today, I'll bring you on here, and we'll talk about, and we will talk about quite a bit today, particularly in the news. We talk about news items, business items, sometimes it's just news in general, like what's going on right now with this shooting rash going across the country. But that's business related, too, because all of these recent shootings have taken place in places of work. Somebody's business. Somebody's job. So, no, we don't operate in a vacuum just because we own a business that we can close our eyes to what's going on around us. So we talk about it right here on the show. Who am I, right? Who daddy made me king? Well, I'm not king, but I do know marketing and business. I've been at it for 30 plus years. I spent several years in corporate America. So I cut my teeth. And I tell young people too, 
sometimes you get, get a little ahead of yourself. I want to go out here and start my own business. I want to be a business owner. You better get that training from somewhere. Because I'm telling you, that stuff they teach you in college is good. Teach you some fancy words and give you a nice title behind your name. <laughs> you need some experience to succeed in business. So even if you decide to go out here and jump out day one, you might want to grab yourself a side hustle to help get you some real world experience in business. I have a company called Gatewood Marketing and Web. We specialize in business development, web development, branding, social media, design. We've been at it for, long, for a long time. I'm also an adjunct professor at Prince George's Community College in the DC area where I teach marketing. I teach social media. I teach networking. I've written two books, one called Played in Fool. It talks about all this crazy spending and how we've been duped, bamboozled, led astray, run amok by people who call themselves marketers. Really just a lot of flim flam artists have come to our community and taken advantage of us. And I called them out in my book, Played in Fool. I also wrote a book called Smarter Than the Boss. And it talks about how sometimes we find ourselves working for people. It's not quite as sharp as we are, but we got to find a way to navigate that. Doesn't mean just quit. But everybody knows something. Everybody's good at something. Everybody's smarter than somebody else at something else. So you may not be as smart as you think. <laughs> and the person may not be as dumb as you think. Let's see what else. Uh, I also work with the Small Business Administration as a consultant, uh, subcontracting on a job where I help companies in the social media and web space. I've been doing that for the last seven, eight years. So yeah, I have a few receipts, but this is to say that when you're giving your money and your trust and your loyalty to a company, just make sure they have some receipts. And that's why I want you to tune in before you go out here and start taking people's money and their trust. Well, nothing disappoints me more than somebody goes out here and opens up a business and you, you just say, okay, I'm going to put my faith in you. Here's my, all my accounts. You're my man. You're my woman now to take care of this for me. And you look up three months later, they're gone. Now you got to start over. Don't do that, people. Come on. Let's, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's get the information, get the knowledge we need. And listen to a old head like Robert Gatewood, who's going to try to <laughs> show you the right way to do it. Now, today we're going to have a special guest, Miss Sharon Bennett. She was on here last week. We had our special session on uh, open mic, and she talked about how she is a financial analyst, and she talks about how people are not prepared. I mean, there's unclaimed money out here. People are leaving this earth. They didn't leave no direction on what to happen when they left this earth. And they have money at bank accounts. They died. And nobody knows what to do with the money. So she's going to come on today. I found it was so interesting that she, what she just gave us about a minute last week. I, so I invited her back. So she's coming up at the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, so we got a lot of, lot of things going on today. Later in the show, I'm going to talk about why are your sales declining? Look at me like, hey, my sales aren't declining. <laughs> well, if you like many people in this economy, yes, they are. And if they're not declining now, give it time. And, but the question is, is that a bad thing? I'll drink to that. Is declining sales always a bad thing? We're going to talk about later in the show, in our marketing sermon, why your sales may be declining in the first place, what you should do about it, if that wasn't your goal, and is declining sales always a bad thing? So you don't want to miss that, particularly if you're a business owner. And if you know somebody who's in business who may be struggling or may be experiencing a shift and they're not sure what's going on and what to do about it, tune in to the uh, marketing sermon coming up around 11.15. Uh, let's see. We have some observances this month. This is the Today is National Donut Day. Darn it. I knew something was calling my name with this coffee. Man, a good old Krispy Kreme donut would have been. You know, I, I cut back on that stuff. I started eating oatmeal in the morning. <laughs> but it's healthy, but a good donut sure would have been good this morning. Oh, man. I bet you when I leave here, 
take my first stop. <laughs> Let's see. Also, National Egg Day. Ooh, I love a good egg, too. Mm. Man, I put cheese in that egg. And, woo! Oh, have mercy. Coming up later in the month, we're going to have Father's Day and Juneteenth. I think they share the same day this, this month. June 19th coming up. Father's Day and Juneteenth. Let's see. It's also Professional Wellness Month. I like that. African American Music Appreciation Month. Get my guitar. I'm going to surprise y'all one day. I'm telling you. I'm going to bring my guitar and my keyboard on here. I'm trying to lose every client and listener I have. <laughs> I, you know, I did. I actually, but I actually got a. I went to college on a music scholarship. That's one of those little secrets you may not know about Robert Gatewood. I uh, majored in music my first year. I was uh, Livingstone College, came recruiting to my campus. We had to audition. And they gave me a full music scholarship. I played the baritone horn in the marching band and the concert band. And while I was at Livingstone, I picked up a couple of other instruments, like baritone horn, uh, trombone, trumpet, keyboard. So this is African-American Music Appreciation Month. So I really appreciate it. I can relate. Let's see. Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, National Safety Month, National Candy Month. There goes your teeth and Caribbean American Heritage Month. So we got a lot of recognitions in the month of June. Um, I was thinking that I was driving to work. I was hearing this commercial on I think the Sirius XM. Somebody comes on there and says, hey, the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side. And I thought about that, and I've been, I've always listened to that quotation, that expression, and I've always, it's almost like one of my pet peeves, the grass is greener on the other side. Now, what it, it implies is that sometimes we don't appreciate what we have because we are so obsessed with what we don't have. We're looking at what other people have and not really appreciating what we have. It's like if you're like you the, the iconic the emblem of you look out the window on your grass you have, you have a neighbor next door and you're out here fertilizing your grass you're sweating and gardening and but their grass always seems to be a little bit greener than yours. Well, that's actually a um, I think it's an obsession that's baked in insecurity. Because in reality, that grass may not be any greener than yours, but because you have a, a proclivity to constantly compare yourself with others, it does indeed appear that that neighbor's grass is greener than your own. I have people come to me as a business developer. I experience this on a daily basis. Somebody come to me and they say, Mr. Gatewood, I need a website. And um, so I look at their website and I said, well, tell me about well, the website looks pretty good to me. I said, well, tell me what, what are you looking for? Maybe you can send me some examples of sites. Oh, it's a site on the, on the internet. It looks, I really like that website. I go look at the website and I'm like, <laughs> your website looks better than that website to me. Is it something this website does that yours doesn't do? No, no, we do the same thing. I just like the way that one looks. That's the case of that grass is greener on the other side. Now, I mean, a less scrupulous person would take their money and, and go along with them and feed that obsession. Yeah, you're right, man. That's a jacked up website they have. Let me give you one of mine. But let me tell you something, folks. As soon as, as soon as you do that, a few months down the road, you're going to be on that less green side of the fence. So you don't want to feed that obsession when you see somebody going through that. So what 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 does, what does all this to say? First of all, I want to say let's nip this in the bud. This is not a good thing. I hate to say it. This constantly comparing yourself with others is not a good thing. Appreciate what you have, and understand that there's extenuating circumstances. Sometimes you're not always comparing apples and apples. You looking at somebody else's website, you spent $500 for yours, and they spent $50,000 for theirs. Yeah, that grass is going to be greener, but can you afford that? 
you look at this perfect family. Oh my God, look at that. They got the perfect kids, the perfect spouse, the perfect house, but you don't know what's going on behind the walls. They might make more money, have their kids in a different type of school, but it could be an abusive situation. There's all kinds of things going on that you're not aware of. You have to appreciate what you have. Okay? So there was an old saying many years ago, an old parable, where this fox went up to the lake. He had caught him a fish. And he had that fish in his mouth. And he was walking as he was walking away from the lake. He looked down and saw this reflection. It was a fox that looked just like him. This fox that he was looking at had a fish in his mouth that looked bigger than his. Well, actually, he let go of the fish in his mouth to go after the fish in his reflection's mouth. It wasn't a bigger fish. The grass wasn't greener. He didn't appreciate what he have. He had. And sometimes that obsession can cause you to lose what you have. So take greater stock in what you have and build upon it and stop comparing yourself to others. And I hate to say it, folks, but sometimes social media has fueled this obsession because you have a constant and front row seat to green grasses all over the place. And you're steadily comparing yourself. I'm just saying don't do it. Don't do it. Take what you have. Understand that each of us are different. Be yourself because everybody else is already taken all right, folks, let's do this. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and do some news. I want to say good morning to a few folks. Good morning, Platinum. Happy Friday to you. Thank you for tuning in. Good morning, Emmanuel. Thank you, Emmanuel, for tuning in. And thank you for your uh, being a constant follower and coming and providing feedback to the show. And everybody else who's tuning in, I see you out there on uh, Facebook and I see you on YouTube. And if you want to join the conversation or get acknowledgement, just put your name in the feed and we will shout you out. And also, if you want to join, we're going to do the news in a second. And if any of those topics catch your eye and you want to tune in or join in or chime in, we have your uh, instructions. Go to marketingpulpit.com and you'll see join the discussion. Or you can just type in mpi.bz. And that'll take you to the instructions on how to get your comments on the show we'll bring you on the screen and talk about it and then uh, you can get your plug on your business while you're at it i want to make sure we promoting the people who are tuning in this is your show now marilyn made a good point she said sometimes the person who's comparing yourself to is envious of you now that is so true that platinum you have nailed it so hang on ladies and gentlemen let's take a quick break we'll be back in a minute don't go anywhere this is the marketing pool i'm robert gate with your host and we'll be back in a moment I'm not dizzy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should pay more. They should be given more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks bag the food, got to talk about it. Before you curse the darkness, fill around in your pocket. See if you have a candle to light and light your way out of that darkness. 
complaining is just not going to do it. Nobody wants to hear it. I'm telling you. Nobody cares about your complaint. I don't. <laughs> I want you to do something about it. I'm concerned. But if you're not doing anything to light that candle, nobody gives a flying you know what. All right. So the next time you find yourself facing doom, gloom, complain, get out your matches, find you a candle, and just light your way out of it. Is it going to be easy? Not always, but I'll tell you what, you're more likely to get some type of result than sitting there complaining and cursing the darkness. Light the candle. All right, welcome back to the show. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gate with your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses. We're drinking coffee. We're saving jobs. We're saving our community. Now, if you find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just turn on this show. It's free. I'm not trying to sell you anything. And I do people, I will admit, sometimes people hear me on standing up here talking. They think, yeah, I must know what he's talking about. Let me call him. Well, it's not quite that easy. I'm not taking everybody as a client. My goal, for, my goal for being here is not to get more clients. I'm full right now. I have taken a couple of clients this year, but my goal is to bring information that can help you be successful in your business life. And I even point you to other people that might be able to help you. We bring on guests on the show. We provide resources and things of that nature. I'm on a mission to build business in our business in our community, to build our economic foundation and put people to work. Uh, let's talk about some of the items that happened in the news. We still have this these people out here shooting up the place. We had a person up in uh, Tulsa this week, went into a medical building, shot up the place. Man, I tell you, it's hard to be in business now object of this guy's eye was somebody who had performed a surgery on his back and he didn't like the i guess he didn't like the outcome his back was still hurting so he said well look i'm still hurting so let me go shoot you shoot up the place kill you and a few other people is that where we are as a society <clears throat> we understand that the lockdown and COVID 19 and kind of change a lot of people's mental state but they seem to com the common denominator seems to be the easy access to these high caliber weapons. Yeah, somebody can shoot you with a handgun or a knife, stab you with a knife. But these, these, this AR-15 semi-automatic weapon that tears into the flesh and causes cavitation and tears into the, uh, you wouldn't have these high fatalities. If we don't do something about this gun scourge, we are going to be lost as a society. We had Uvalde, Texas, and then three weeks ago, we had the massacre in Buffalo, New York, where this uh, racist shot up, went out to kill black people. I said it once and I said, again, we got to fix this. This is really unacceptable as a society. Other countries have found a way to fix it or at least minimize it. I'm sure we can too if we put our mind to it. Let's see what else is going on. What's going on with Monique and D.L. Hughley? Man, every time I turn around, we got black stars slapping each other, fighting each other, calling each other. Now, what's all? I need to cut this out. Well, Mo and D.L. were on a we're on a, uh, a, I guess, a, a comedy tour, and both wanted to be the headliner. And now we've had this going back and forth where both have provided contracts that, that demonstrate that the other, that each should have been the headliner. Monique matches, smashes DL Hughley and her stand up routine. DL comes on to his, uh, YouTube channel and smashes Monique and he says that Monique at some point it's got to be you it can't be Lee Daniels Oprah Tyler Steve Charlemagne the God so he's pretty much saying that Monique is the common denominator 
And of course, she's saying, I'm just a sister trying to make sure that I don't get taken advantage of. Well, both of them could be right. I'm not taking a side, but I think these kind of things can be better sell off of social media. Uh, let's call your sister, call your brother. Let's talk about it. Have your representative to talk it out. But I guess that build the ratings. I don't know. Monique and DL, cut it out. Cut it out. Let's see. This return to work discussion has been given a new life when Elon Musk, who's a very colorful character, he's uh, been threatening to buy Twitter. He owns Tesla. It's a very successful company. Very good was a stock, good stock investment at the recently. <laughs> oh boy, we'll talk about that on another day. But man, I've taken a bath on that in the last few couple of months. Um, but he's saying the executives need to come back to work. He said you can work from home if you put in forty hours in the office a week. <laughs> I think that was a little being a little sarcastic. And he said if you if you think what I'm doing is antiquated then you can go pretend to work somewhere else. So we're still having this debate about return to work, whether people should come back to the office or work from home. I don't know. I think if you can do the job from home, you should be allowed to. But I do understand also a lot of these companies that are that are feeling like they're not getting their money's worth and they'd like to have a better hand and control of what's going on. But I'm going to tell you something else to the workers you need to be aware of, too. These companies that are allowing you to work from home, they are engaging in some activities and some monitoring that you may not be aware of. <laughs> when you figure out, when you find out what's going on, what they put on your computer and the kind of monitoring they're doing, you may give that a second thought. You might decide going to work to the office might be a little bit less of, of two evils. As a matter of fact, um, a consulting group showed more that more and more people have decided that they would rather leave their job than to subject themselves to some of the monitoring devices that are taking place. There's uh, surveillance that track keystrokes, facial recognition, the downloads, the websites you viewed, how long you're on the screen. So you might want to think about this return to work versus working from home you got to weigh some of your privacy concerns. And so you might say, look, Elon Musk might sound like a bully by telling you to come back to work, but he's the one who's talking. What about these people who aren't talking? They get all these bugs and spyware on your machine. <laughs> you think you're getting over? Not. Let's see. Jamie Dimon, the, uh, he's the chief of the biggest bank, JP uh, Morgan Chase. He said there's an economic hurricane coming. I believe that too. That's another reason I've been talking more about my book played in full lately because people are, are not taking money seriously. We went through a period during the pandemic. A lot of people got stimulus money. Some people had a bump in their, in their revenues based on the line of work they were in. But they're not looking at the global picture. They're not looking at the war in Ukraine and how it's going to impact grain and things like that they're not looking at the oral situation they're not looking at the supply chain in general and they're out still spending money like everything as well but i say you need to kind of rein in some of this superfluous spending and start and continue to invest in things that's going to generate you some recurring income particularly if you're a business owner or if not a business owner look for some safe investments but this it is time to take heed in what's happening in the economy and don't assume that all is well just because it hasn't affected you, you yet. I'm just saying, brother, just saying. We got supply chains coming back. That issue is coming back up this summer. A lot of you, we talk, we're not talking about it as much as we were this past holiday season, but we're still having these issues where there's not enough trucks to deliver the goods to the stores. I just placed an order for one of my clients, um, a book order. We placed the order in May, and we won't get the books until August. And we're going to be out of books for one of my major clients. Now, I did try to ring the bell early, but um, 
just in other words, make sure you're aware. You, you look at the big picture. Don't just look at what's in front of you. Look down the road. Uh, let's see what else is going on. A Florida school gave away, gave away handguns and shotguns. And an AK-47 is part of a raffle. There's a sickness in this country, ladies and gentlemen. If you think that's normal behavior, these adults, where are the adults in this country? They all work. You're talking about the kids going out shooting up the place. They're learning from these crazy adults. What is it? The fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. These kids didn't grow up this way. This had to be taught. Okay, let me keep going here. A man scammed a woman out of $4,000 after he borrowed her telephone. Now, let me ask you this. Do you give your, if a, if a stranger walks up to you on the street and asks you to borrow your phone, do you give that person your phone? I know we got big hearts as a community. We like to help people. We're nurturing, we're giving. We're always aiding and assisting. But if somebody walks up and a stranger walks up on the street and asks you to borrow your phone, will you give that person your phone? I think once upon a time, I may have considered it, but I'm not giving you jack. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, this lady, this lady let the person borrow her phone and the person watched her plug in the uh, password and then while he had her phone, I guess this guy's done this a while. He's been, he was pretty quick on the fingers. He was able to punch in her password, which also was the same password of her bank account. He transferred out $4,000, gave her phone back and went on her way. Well, young folks, this is just a public service announcement. <laughs> Don't give a stranger your phone. I'm just saying, that's not a good idea, okay? I know we want to help people. We want to be good, the good guy. But don't give a stranger your phone. Okay, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say that as an absolute. Keep your phone to your in your pocket. Say, Look, let me call that. Let me call that person for you. Let's see what well, this is happening in the news. The news just gets more and more bizarre. A shoplifter walked out of a dollar store with eight hundred dollars in laundry detergent. Hmm. And Madeline is exactly right. Ask them for the number and you dial it for them. Yes, ma'am exactly what you would do. Good morning, uh, Brother Bradley Thomas, one of the greatest attorneys in the land. And he says hello to the rest of the congregation. Good brother. Um, shoplifters walked out of the dollar store with $800 in laundry detergent. Well, let's give them credit for credit they do. They were thrifty and they're clean. <laughs> but you shouldn't steal. Shouldn't. No. What are you planning to do with eight hundred dollars worth of uh, of laundry detergent? Hmm. We have another one of these cases where a man defecates in the aisle of a store. Is this the new thing now? Man, I'm just oh boy. We last couple of weeks ago, some lady went to a hair a wig shop, and she decides to relieve herself in the aisles of the store. Now another man in a clothing store. I'd never heard of this before. Is this the new thing? This world is going, this world is going crazy. Okay. 11-year-old is charged with felony in upstate New York after he threatened to kill his classmates who wouldn't let him cheat in the client in the science class. He said, My dad has 28 guns, and I don't, I'm not afraid to bring them in here and use them. Like Jesus, help us, help us out. We need you. I have a, I'm gonna get in my dad. Me and my dad was the my dad was the preacher. <laughs> I'll be getting on the pool pit. I'm gonna have to get off the marketing pool pit and get on the, the spiritual pool pit. Things ain't normal. They're not normal, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I say go out here and start you a business. I know I'm a, I'm like a, what do you say? Like the problem, every problem is when you're a hammer. Every problem looks like a nail. But I tell you what, though, I'm changing my tune slightly. Some of y'all shouldn't be in business. Yep, I said it. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you. 
until you're ready to be to accept the consequences and understand how what a, the gravity of the situation. Somebody leave one source and come to you, and you're not serious about business. Now they've got to start all over again when you fold up in three months. So I'm saying, look, if you're not ready, if you're not serious about business, if you're not ready to be responsible for people's money and information and services and supplies, don't do it. I want you to do it if you're gonna do it right. But if you're gonna if you're not doing it right, Robert Gatewood is saying, don't do it. Everybody's not built for business. You can be taught, you can learn. The best way to learn is to tune into the marketing pulpit show every Friday. And I'll tell you, you come on here with a jacked up business. I'm going to tell you, you have a jacked up business. You're never going to make any money doing that. I don't care what you saw on TV. What You saw something on the internet. I don't care if your mama, daddy did it. And they did it times were different. That's why we're going to talk about later in the show. Why your sales might be shrinking. And you don't even know why. Or if it's a bad or good thing. So anyway, folks, that's the news. Go get me some coffee and come back here. Let me ring up my guest in a minute. Uh, we have Sharon Bennett. She was on last week. We had our section of where anybody can come on and talk about some of the items we heard in the, in the news. So if you're out there in radio land, TV land, internet land, and if you want to chime in on any of these topics we talked about today, go to mpi.bz and you'll see the link to get on camera. And I'll be glad to bring you on and we'll talk about it. And when we're done, you have a chance to plug your company. Don't be complaining about you don't have any exposure and nobody knows about you. And I'm over here handing you the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> well, not the kingdom kingdom, but I'm making it easy for you. Your cost of admission, just come on here and let me know about one of these topics we talked about. We can talk about... Uh, you can talk about the uh, shooting. We can talk about the young man who took his gun to school. We can talk about the shoplifters. We can talk about the phone. We can talk about uh, going back to work. This monitoring of people on their computers. We can talk about D.L. Hughley and Monique. So we got plenty to talk about. So if you want a topic, you want to come in and talk about one of these topics. Let me get your opinion. And then when we're done, we'll give you a chance to introduce everybody to your business and try to drive some sales in your direction. Now, if you got a jacked up business, <laughs> I might give you some gentle advice, but I'm not going to try to embarrass you or do anything like that. All right. So hang on a minute. I'm going to bring my guest on in a minute. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, talk about our sponsors like BLE Executive Suites, who has their three locations in uh, Lago National Harbor. College Park. And let's see what else is going on. So hang on a second. We'll be back in a minute. All right, welcome back. Uh, go to that uh, address I just gave out, uh, mpi.bz. The reason I put that page together is because we get bombarded. See, like every show, I get like reams of people saying, "How do I get on the show?" I said, "Do I have to pay you? Do I have to?" Well, there's three ways you can get on the show. You can come on as a uh, open mic, which we offer this time of every every show. We can talk about some of the news items, and then we give you a minute to plug your company. You can enter your name as one of our content providers where we might put you in our database of uh, experts and when a topic that comes up that's related to you, 
like in the news, then we may bring you on as our industry expert to talk about it. And that's kind of, it may happen in a week, it may happen in a year. And then of course you can buy uh, a promotion where we actually put you on a uh, schedule and we can bring you on to talk, uh, you can plug your, your products under an advertisement. We get, get a lot of people interested in promoting their events and their books. And so that's a good way to do it. Just go ahead and get you a spot and uh, we'll help promote that event or book for you. So there's ways to get involved. This is your show. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I know you like to hear me talk, but sometimes we might want to hear you too. All right? So I might want to sit back and drink my coffee. Why you, why you rap a little? <laughs> Thirsty this morning. Thirsty. All right, let me get here. Let me bring in my guest. Uh, good morning, Karen. Hello, Robert. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. How are you today? I'm good. I'm going to give a little history. We we opened up the mics last week and Sharon came on and she was so intriguing that we had to bring her back. As a matter of fact, Sharon, I had a couple of people that asked me about you. So I was right and my my intuition was right. Somebody said, I didn't know about that. What do you call it, the POD thing? What do you call that? <laughs> yes. Two people, two people asked me about that. I thought I'd be there. Sharon, Sharon struck a chord there. <laughs> but anyway, why don't you do this? Introduce yourself quickly, and we have a couple, couple of questions for you. So, introduce, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Okay, I'm Sharon, and I am a chief strategist for my company, for our company, and we are doing our best to help families uh, to leave generational legacies, and we're really excited about that, Robert. Trying to help people leave generational. Legacy behind, families, yes. Let me ask you this. I'm going to jump to this because, like I said, based on your conversation last week, tell somebody what is this POD? I don't, I don't want to forget this. I want to make sure we get okay. this in early. Please tell okay. me, explain that. I'll be happy to, Robert. Uh, payable on debt. Um, I was in, of course, the banking industry. I'm in the finance in industry. And lots of times families, when emergencies or things happen, they need to maybe access checking accounts of their loved ones, especially if someone passes away um, unexpectedly and you need funds, you may need money to help to take care of things, to finalize things. But what happens lots of times, if you don't have the death certificate or if you're not the power of attorney or if you don't have access to that account, legal access, those funds are frozen. They are not available. So the funds of your loved ones, you can't access for a period of time. And of course, if they didn't have a will, it could take a longer period of time. But if it's your spouse, your children, if your children have checking accounts, your brothers, your sisters, those who you love that are close to you, all you need to do is contact your bank and let them know you would like to put Whoever, des whoever you designate name on your checking account. And what that does is payable on death. And other banks may call it different things. But if you say payable on death, I want them to be able to access my account. If something happens to me, then it's just a matter of signing, I think, some paperwork. Again, different banks may have different processes. But it's just that simple. And what okay. that means is if your name is on there and you need access to those funds, you'll be able to get. So I could call my bank today. So look, I want to do a POD and they'll put somebody's name on there and get my money if they have to. You have to share with them who you like for that to be. And of course, okay. they have to do their verifications probably and all of that or their right. signatures. But yes, payable on debt. All right. Well, you heard it now. I told you, I told, I told my listeners I was going to ask you that early as soon as you came <laughs> on. So I had to get that out of the way. Also, something you said last week that caught my attention. You said that um, one thing you wanted to do is to make sure people got things organized and documented. Yes, yes. You said that was like, that's like a, a call celeb for you. It's like you're a raison yes. d'etre, your reason for being, your purpose in life. <laughs> tell, us, <laughs> tell us exactly what that means. Break that down for us. Yes, well, Robert, you know, I have clients. I've worked with clients for a number of years um, as a of course, being in the financial industry, we have to uh, work with clients who maybe lose loved ones or they have emergencies. They have to go into the hospital unexpectedly. And with a client in particular, I remember she was a sweet lady, um, but unexpectedly she passed away and her family was frantically trying to find 
her information, um, her insurance information, her banking information, social security information. And they had no idea where the information was. And the only reason that I knew where it was was because I had been working with her, helping her to become more financially smart about her money. And we were able to help those fam that family to locate those things. But what would have happened if they had not known? There would have been absolutely nothing they could have done to execute her will. They would not have known where her policies were. Absolutely nothing. They would not have I been. Mean, is this a big problem? Is this a big problem? Oh, it is, Robert. About 68% of Americans don't have their financial information documented. They don't have wills. And not only that, Robert, oh, millions and millions of dollars go unclaimed mm. for years and years and years because no one knows who the next of kin is because the information wasn't documented. And in the the uh, people of African descent in that culture is even more prevalent, but also other people of color are beginning to realize what we have to do something about this because my concern, Robert, is you may have already heard about this, the net worth, not just people of color, but America, the net worth is astonishingly low. But in the community of those of African descent, it was projected that the net worth would be zero by about 2053, if I'm not mistaken. But because of COVID, that number, that time has been accelerated and it's happening now. People are leaving and families have zero net worth. They have absolutely nothing to pass on to their children that little alpha generation that's coming up, the three and four year olds will have nothing, no assets, no uh, real estate, no money, nothing. And if we're not documenting things, it will be even worse. So we're encouraging people to document and organize their things. And for people who are not aware of what net worth is, they need to understand that just because you you got a, a $70,000 car, but you owe 70, the car is <laughs> upside down. <laughs> that car has no worth. <laughs> That car belonged to the bank. That you can't That's say absolutely look. right. You are so it, right, it, Robert. I'm you are you, so same, right. Same thing on these houses. You got these houses upside down, and you say, well, "Look, when 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 my folks die, when Aunt Susie die, we're gonna be paid." Aunt Susie was in the hole. <laughs> right, so, and and Robert also, if those assets have not been earmarked, if if they haven't said, "I want this to pass on to my daughter or my son." What happens if there's no will, no document? Of course, the courts have to come in and make a determination and your assets may go to people you don't want your assets to go to. And if you have children, this is this one was really dear to my heart. Children, if you have not named a guardian for your children, your children, the courts may assign those children to someone you may not want your children to live with. And I'm going to share this and, 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 and then I'm going to um, let you ask whatever questions you have, Robert, but very familiar with um, a family. Uh, when I worked as uh, with an attorney, the children knew they had been taught that if anything happened to mommy and daddy, we're leaving something for you. Well, something did happen to mommy and daddy, unfortunately, and those children were had to be assigned, of course, to relatives. Well, Robert, those relatives abused that money. They abused those children, that children's inheritance. And when those children became older, there was no inheritance. They used that money to fix up their home, saying that, oh, this is for the children. They used the money for other things. But I believe the court determined that they misallocated those funds and had to return those funds those to those children. So please be careful. Get your things documented, especially if you're parents and you have children, as well as pets. Wow. Man, that's 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 an eye opener. Mm -hmm. You know what? I was um after I did uh talk to you last week, I also mm -hmm. found out that you have a you don't just talk about it, you actually have What's the old saying in business? Find a need and fill it. Uh, find a problem and solve it. Because this is such a uh, this problem is so endemic that you actually came up with a 
a a process, a service, a a tool to help people organize and document. Tell us about that. Yes, I did, Robert, only because I needed something. Um, the, the tools that I saw out there were wonderful tools, but they didn't have areas in there that I wanted, like passwords. I have quite a few passwords, you know, in my business. And so passwords um, and other assets and things like that needs to be documented. My pets, you know, if I have pets. So, yes, I did. And it was very painstaking. Um, in fact, I think I was in tears sometimes because it took me so long to, to, to do it and to but it's done and it's completed and others heard about it and wanted one for themselves. So yes, I did. It's called the personal life portfolio. As a matter of fact, I grabbed a copy of it. I'm telling yes, you folks. Yes, you did. I was telling, uh, I think I told you my brother, we had this conversation. I was down in Carolina for his, uh, 501, for five, what is his, um, five K. And we were sitting around just the brothers, you know, brothers talk, between uh, drinking crown, I mean drinking uh, water, and <laughs> drinking water and coffee. <laughs> we had, this, this topic happened to come up, and I say, look, I say, look, brother, if something happens to you, me, I'm tell you guys right now, I have uh, some money buried in the yard over here. I have a, a password <laughs> under the table here. I have a spreadsheet over here. And then I said, wait a minute. There's got to be a way to put all this stuff together. That's so funny. And you had, you, I mean, it just blew me away that you had actually created a tool that does exactly what I was trying to describe. Where do you put this information? And now, now one of the problems, somebody's asking right now, how do you get a copy of the personal life portfolio? Let me, do you have a, I'm going to put this in the, uh, in the, you can tell them while I type it in the. Uh, okay. In the, I will. You can go to. Okay. Okay. You can find a copy of the personal life portfolio on the website. It's www.preplanyourway.com. www.preplanyourway.com. And the reason we named it that was because it's very important that you plan your life the way you want it. You plan now how you want things to be done later. Um, and so we're really excited about the guide. And once you go to that website, uh, it tells you the cost, how you can get it. But also, if you have questions, you can also scroll down to the bottom of that page and schedule a free consultation. We're happy to share with you what you need to do, how to fill it out. Um, and Robert, this is also another wonderful thing in that guide. This really helps families to start the conversation about sensitive things that people have been afraid to talk about, you know, for years. One of the things that's really important is not, not that you just document it, but that you fund some of your plans, that you fund your final expenses. Robert, when you said you started writing things down, I was just so happy to hear, hear that. It's on a spreadsheet. You have taken action to write it down, but not only have you written it down, you have funded your plan. And that's so important, Robert. Well, that is, well, I'm telling you, this, this was personal to me because I've seen as a business developer, as somebody from a very large family, mm -hmm. and just being in our community, I see this, I have a front row seat to this. Yeah. And I am just dismayed at the lack of preparation, and particularly in the business community and the black community. Yes. And I happen to be in both, I have my foot in both puns. And so I see this like every day, it's like, God, go, let's, Let's we got a plan for everything. Yes, I mean, we plan. We got a plan to go to school. We got to plan our personal relationships. We got to plan. We also have to plan our eventual demise. And That's doing right. this is not just for death's sake. It's just good to have this stuff documented somewhere. It is. I mean, if you're starting a business and you got all these passwords out here floating around. You want if you want some if you want Facebook to be able to give your information to somebody. And I'm going to Facebook now. And these pages somebody who died. 20 years ago, yes, and they're floating yeah. around, and right. I'm, there, I'm getting messages because you know, Facebook assumes you're alive, so they'll say, It does, you know, you know this it person, does. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Come on. Oh, so, there's yeah. steps to get that information off of Facebook. Now, Facebook has a way you can actually go into them, 
they have a, a, a link that you can actually designate somebody. But you can put that also right. in your preplanyourway.com. That's right. So these That's things right. have to be taken a little more seriously. And I'm I'm taking it from the approach of a business owner. I'm sure this is not just for business owners, but my grades on Detro, and this is where our, our goals are aligned. I'm always trying to protect the interests and uplift and build and prepare business owners. Yes. And I see this is a tool that every business owner should have. And I'm, that's the Oh, idea. absolutely. Especially with succession planning. I know you talked about, I was so glad to hear you talk about that succession planning. A lot of businesses don't think about that. They don't think about the key people that are in their business and what will happen if something happens to them. So this could be part of their succession planning as well. So it's not just for businesses, it's for individuals. Single people really need to have uh, this guide and, and make sure your parents get a copy. And Robert, one of the things that was important to me was that it would be digital, meaning that you could fill it out while you're on your computer or your um, tablet. You can fill it out as fillable, but you can also send that to your loved ones, your attorney, so that that file is on record. So if anything happens, you have that file on record. Now that's cool. It's actually a fillable PDF. Type in the information, you save it, and you can save it, download it, and you can send it to other people. You can send it to the ones you love. That's absolutely right. And of course, um, that's so important. I can't tell you the families that came in um, uh, who, who lost loved ones and they were like, I don't know the passcode to this. I, I don't know what they wanted. Did they want to be? So it not only helps you to list your real estate, because that's one of the assets that really goes unclaimed. You may have driven and seen homes that were boarded up. Sometimes they're not boarded up because they're old. Sometimes they're boarded up and there are signs on them because the families haven't claimed them or they've mm -hmm. lost the asset because they didn't pay the taxes or they didn't know the asset existed. They didn't know it. They didn't, they didn't know, know that existed. person owned that house. It wasn't documented. It was up in his head or in a drawer somewhere, but nobody else knew about it. Absolutely. That is so correct. So that's why, Robert, we're encouraging encouraging everyone that's able to do start documenting their, their things and start notating their things so that they can pass that hard work. I mean, we work hard. Uh, we work smart for what we have. Let's pass it on to that next generation. It's the loving thing to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right here on the Marketing Pulpit. Thank you again, Sharon. You're we welcome. actually put the uh, we put the, the web address on the uh, in the feed on Facebook and on the uh, anybody who's watching the show, you can get that information. We'll also put it on our uh, on our website as well. And thank you again, Sharon, for being a great resource. I'm glad we discovered you <laughs> and uh, I will have to invite you back again when we talk about this topic again in the future. Well, Robert, thank you for all that you are doing for the community. I mean, you are already creating a legacy yourself. And I think it's wonderful what you're doing, allowing people the opportunity to do what they do. But the information that you're passing on is just really wonderful. So thank you for what you do, Robert. Thank you very much. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. That's Sharon Bennett. And her, her uh, guide is called preplanyourway.com. You can go there and pick up a copy. We're going to come back in a minute. We're going to talk about quickly about, are you experiencing a decline in sales? And I'm going to tell you why that may be happening, what you can do about it, and is that really a bad thing? So hang on for a second. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. We'll be back in a minute. Don't go anywhere. So hang on to your hat. <laughs> I'm not busy. I'm just in another era. Lock your refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should be paid more, they should be given more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks bag the food, got to talk about it. So your sales are shrinking. You're seeing this decline. You want to attribute it to COVID. You want to attribute it to um, the economy, the war in Ukraine, or whatever uh, cause or the jewel, but you you need to take a closer dive and a deeper look as why your sales are declining. Now you might say to yourself, "Well, Robert, you're not talking about me because my sales are through the roof." Well, if you, that means you're probably um, 
also understand that business is cyclical. You may be going through the roof today. You may be going through the floor tomorrow. So what we have to do as a business owner is understand that when these things happen, they don't usually happen in a vacuum. There's usually some underlying cause. Now, some of the, I'm going to give you some of the quick reasons that your business may be declining or sales may be declining right now as we speak. Now, one reason that many people fail to acknowledge is that there is a business life cycle. There is a product life cycle. And through these cycles, sales go up and down, sometimes depending on where your business or industry is in the cycle. Every industry and business go through introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. If you are in an industry that's in the growth phase, it may not be your ingeniousness or your, your, your ingenuity that's driving these sales. It could be that the industry is in a growth cycle and everybody's doing well. By the same token, if you're experiencing flat sales, declining sales, sometimes that industry that you're in is flatlining. It is in maturity or it's in declining. And there's no amount of marketing is going to turn that around. You may have to look at an exit strategy, get out of that, on your resources back to something else that's in the growth phase but that is a number one reason that sometimes we find ourselves in a business or sales decline cycle sometimes there's demographic shifts sometimes the market that you were going after is no longer interested in your service or it could have been that that market has either passed on their, their taste has changed sometimes the numbers may have diminished you may be targeting let's say an african-american audience in a certain location that market, the demographic may have changed. It could be demographic shift. A different demographic has moved in. Uh, and you're targeting somebody that's literally no longer there. So you got to look at the demographic shifts and location shifts. Sometimes the distribution channel is the reason your sales are dropping. People aren't buying it the way you're delivering it. You're still looking at selling it through the open front store, the corner of Church and Main Street, but everybody else is ordering it online. So you have to look at the distribution channels could be a number one, could be a major reason that your sales are declining. Pricing is a big factor in, in sales. Sometimes your price is simply too low or too high. It has not adjusted based on the realities on the ground. You have to go back and look at your pricing. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to lower your price. In some cases, it, it may mean you have to raise your price because people are believing that this can't be a quality product because the price is too low. Technology, technology and obsolescence. That could be a reason that your price, that your business is experiencing a decline in sales. You just simply have not kept up, either through your uh, distribution channels, the way you're delivering the products, or the products themselves. People just might not need that particular product anymore because of certain advances in technology. We have to also look at competition. Right now, we're facing globalization, and we also have to be very cognizant of what we call indirect competition. Indirect competition means that somebody who's not necessarily doing exactly what you do, but they offer the services that you do. It could be your main service, and to them, it could be like an add-on service. Indirect competition, sometimes somebody put up a Walmart next to you or an online shop goes up. They're not necessarily selling everything that you offer, but there could be enough of that indirect competition's product offerings that they could take a dent out of your sales. Sometimes politics play a role. Sometimes we put our politics out here on, on Front Street, sometimes to our detriment. So if you're in an industry where people are very polarized, you have to look at your audience. Am I saying or doing something online or in person or in my literature or my website that could be turning people off in this polarization, in this uh, uh, economy, in this political landscape that we're in right now, that could be a fact that it could be actually affecting your bottom line. Advertising, are you advertising and are you advertising in the right places? That post, that Washington Post ad <laughs> that on that uh, hard copy, Washington Post ad just might not do it anymore. You have to look at the more recent and more contemporary types of advertising. Things like podcasts, YouTube channels, meetups, blogs, and things like that have gained prominence over the past few years. And you have to adjust your advertising modems, modems, um, modus operandi based on these shifts in uh in the landscape uh, relationship marketing right now is very big sometimes it's not a matter of just going out here running an ad getting on facebook or youtube or so forth you actually go i have to go out here and build these relationships because right now relationships are a key ingredient in supply chain management if you haven't built those relationships sometimes supplies you're not going to be able to get the supplies you have and that will have a direct impact on your bottom line and your sales are your staff up to the task 
do you have the right mix of people, technological people, sales people, service people? Sometimes the wrong mix or no mix at all can actually have a, a um, deleterious effect on your bottom line. Turnaround time. Are you turning the product around? Are you spending so much time on details and, and perfectionism that you're not getting the product out the door on time? People are not that concerned about protect, uh, perfectionism these days. They're more concerned about service and getting it out the door on time. So you have to sometimes look at your priorities to figure out why your sales are taking a hit. Now, these are, and of course, let's not mitigate or overlook the impact of COVID-19. COVID-19 has actually put a dent in many people's sales. Now, in some cases, it has actually helped sales. But in many cases, you cannot over or under or marginalize the impact that COVID-19 has had. And so some of these um, um, slumps that you're experiencing could be short term. But if you don't act on them, they could be turned into a permanent uh, uh downturn in sales. Now, before we get out of here, I also want to ask you this. Does does uh, reduction in sales, is that always a bad thing? Because I'm not sure if you're doing this now, but you should write a plan or at least conceive a plan every year when you open up your shop. Around November, December, it's a good time to start thinking about where your company hopes to be in the next year, the next two years, next three years, next four years, next five years. Actually have a plan. And sometimes that plan might mean that you're not looking to grow your sales. Sometimes you may be looking to downside because if you look at your goals and if you realize that um, you're not trying to take over the world, you're not trying to become the next Amazon, you're not trying to do this, but you're trying to maintain your shop, trying to hold the line, then declining sales are just part of that process. Like my company, I'm not trying to grow right now. I'm trying to provide better service and cut back on some of the overhead. And so a, a slight drop in sales to me is not necessarily a bad thing because what that does, it allows me to focus on profits and less on sales. Let's understand the difference between sales and profit. You bring in a million dollars, but you're spending a million dollars, you're making zero. But if you bring it in a hundred thousand, but you're keeping 75,000, that's a better situation. That's a better uh, environment. Now, it depends, but it goes back to your goals. If you have a long term goal where you're trying to build um, uh, multiple locations, hire staff, make an impact on the community, then you need those sales. You need that cash flow to further that ambition. But if you have more, less lofty ambitions, such like I said, to maintain the status quo, um, get yourself a nice little living, pay your car note and your house note, then a decline in sales and not necessarily a death nail, it could just mean that you're now making more money on less effort. You're making more money on less effort. And you might have less sales, but you may have more profit in the end. And also, let's not discount peace of mind. Sometimes all those sales, if you're a one-man shop, if you're a small outfit, sometimes all those sales are just not worth the effort. They're not worth the stress. They're not worth the, the agony. So you might want to, once again, go back and evaluate what is it that you're trying to do. Are you trying to grow an organization, build something? Or are you trying to, if you're at a point in your life where you're trying to slow things down, find the door, come up with an exit strategy? In that case, dec declining sales is not necessarily a bad thing. So you have to, it all goes back to your goal, your audience. And I always say, if you get lost along the way, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? Your purpose will always uh, guide you through. Well, folks, that's going to lock. That's going to wrap it up for today. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, Leon, thanks for tuning in this morning. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in. I see Daryl. Thank you again, Daryl, for tuning in. Great guy. He's also a great networker and uh, doing a lot of things out here in the community. Uh, Marilyn, uh, Emmanuel, and a few other people. I got a lot of people on the board here. So if I don't get your name, by all means, thank you again for tuning in to the show and making the show the success that it has been over the years. And we'll be back next week with another uh, lineup of. Uh, people who are participating, another topic, and we'll be back here. You can also go back and listen to this show and share it with others uh, so the others get this information as well because I think this information is valuable. Thank you again, Sharon, for coming on and sharing that information about planning and documenting and making sure we don't leave the little money that we do make out here that's being left and houses boarded up and the government taking over because we didn't document and show people how to get that information that's going to protect our assets. So thank you again, Sharon. 
for sharing that information with us today. Folks, that's going to wrap up the marketing pulpit for today. And as always, if you want to be successful, you got to do these three things. Do the right thing, do it at the right time, and you got to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work. People don't understand marketing. You can't stop every time the money runs out. You need to come on and tell people why your service is different. Why is everybody so angry? Airline passengers biting the TSA agents. I mean, it's, it reminds me of one of those uh, zombie apocalyptic movies. And as a community, collectively, we're going to be taken more seriously if we have that strong economic foundation. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you have to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work.